today we will create a very simple backend for our application, an API that will be providing data. Because usually when you are developing a mobile app, it's not only the mobile application, but it's also the, the external data sources that you need to uh, fetch the data and to make uh, something with, uh, to manage the data, to transform the data and to display it in your mobile application. There are two possibilities here. Either you are controlling the data or you are using some external uh, source which is provided in a certain way. And those two approaches can be combined. For example, you can have your own backend which merges the, the sources, the external sources, and, and provides them to your application. A typical application uses an API. Let's create our own API today. So we can use anything. But I, again, I will do something very, very simple and then we will step by step improve it and, and add more things. I will use JavaScript for that and um, eventually maybe we will migrate that to TypeScript. It's somehow similar because Dart is, is pretty similar to TypeScript. This way it would be easier for us to manage the code base. I was also thinking about doing it in Dart on the server side, but it's a bit more um, troublesome at this point and this part, the backend, is not that important. So maybe we will convert it to Dart on the server. Uh, but for now, I just wanted to do something quick, something simple, because the focus is on the mobile app. So this API will be used to show you certain scenarios. We will be using that to simulate certain scenarios in a more realistic way. OK, so let's go ahead and let's uh, start with the, with the app. So to create an application, I, will, I need uh, to do npm in it. First, let's create a directory. This is going to be email app, uh, let's say backend. And now let's do in it. We need a server that can accept requests and uh, produce responses. So I will be using a library called uh, Hunswot, which is my own library. So we can use anything else like Express.js or, or anything you like. But I'm using that because it's, uh, it's my child. OK, so we need to install it with NPM. OK, it's done. So now let's uh, create the file and let's open this um, up in VS Code. So it's just a blank screen. So first thing would be to import the library. We need to create an instance of our server. We need to uh, define a route. So let's say it's just a This first route, the root route, will be returning a string, a uh, Flutter and practice. And we need to uh, start the server. So we will say it will be listening on the port 5544. And let's see if it works. So I'm. we need to just start it. And it's listening now on the port 5544. So let's do a request to see if it's if it receives a request and it's able to produce responses. So I will be using a tool called HTTP, which is a Python uh, tool, which is something like a curl, but uh, nicer because it gives you some colors, etc. So um, that's the home page of this uh, tool. So this is the curl behind and here it's the HTTP which gives you nice colors and it's the syntax is pretty nice, more uh, simpler and easier to understand than curl, I would say. So I encourage you to check this out. So here we have um, the server. So let's listening on the port 5544. Let's do request. And as you can see, we are receiving the, the response of type 200 and the string flutter and practice as we defined over here. So that's good. 
But the the first thing that this server, this backend, will be doing is the ability to query contacts. Because right now in our application, we are fetching the whole list of contacts. And we are, if someone types a query, we are filtering this list on the client, which means in the mobile app. So we have to fetch the whole list and then uh, on the device we do uh, the filtering. But it would be better to send this query from the mobile to the server and let the server do the filtering so that it produces only the list that we are interested in. So we can just display it. We don't have to do anything on the client in the mobile application. And that's exactly what we will do here. So to simplify it even further, I will just grab uh, this uh, list. Right now we are using JSON placeholder and there is this endpoint users. So here you can't really do uh, searching. You can just do simple, very simple stuff, accessing the resources, uh, etc. So we will just grab this data, we, which we are already using, and our backend will be providing this list. But on top of that, it will be also able to filter it. So let's create a file called contacts. So again, I won't be doing any database here or any other uh, thing related to persistence. So I'll be storing this data directly in a file. It's a JSON file. So we are pasting this uh, here and that's good. So now we can uh, get those contacts. We can just <clears throat> use them directly because they are in the same directory. And now let's for tests, let's create another route. And this route will be returning the um, uh, those contacts. So here I'm using a helper called OK, which is provided by Hunsvot. So I just need to require it. So if you're interested in whose fault, check the website. I haven't really finished yet. It's just uh, very simple, basic stuff right now there, as usual with me. Uh, but it provides some interesting uh, helpers, helper methods and wrappers for usual tasks. So in this example, there is a helper OK, which represents a response of, of the type 200. And if you want to, for example, create easily a response of type uh, 201, which is created, you can just use the helper um, created. And there are more methods defined in this uh, library. That's one of the things it provides. Okay, but in this case, we are using OK. And we are just sending back the, the data we have in this, in this file. So Let's see if it works. So I need to restart the server. So now the previous route works and it works as, as well. So there is a nice thing um, here provided by uh, Hunsvot. It sets the, for example, the content type for the proper uh, type, which is JSON in this case. And previously it was string, which is text plain in HTTP uh, parlance. Okay, so that's good, but we need to, but this is nothing more than what we had. And the initial idea was to do the, 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 the querying here on the server on, in this backend. So let's do that. Here, um, the important thing is that if you are not using the curly braces, there is this thing called implicit return in JavaScript, which means that you can just pass the value. And if you want to use, and it, it can be only just one line usually. And if you want to have more like a bigger function, you have to use the curly braces and then you have to use explicit return. So implicit return and explicit return over here, because we need to do that to uh, do some 
logic here. So first of all, we need the, the query. So we will be passing that as a query parameter. So query parameter in HTTP is everything which goes after the question mark sign. So for example, in our case, it would be Q equals and the value we want to find. So for example, let's say two letters or, or Clement. Tina, for example, to find this uh, particular person or all line. So there is also possible to, to use spaces. You have to use special characters, but usually the browser does it for you. So you don't have to worry about that. So we will be, so everything after the question mark is a query string, a query parameter in HTTP. We'll be using that parameter to filter our contacts. So in whose fault, it's pretty easy because you don't have to do any parsing of the Incoming data is already provided for you. That's one of the reasons I used I am using that. On top of the fact that it's my own library. <laughs> and um, so here it provides uh, something called params, which is the combination of query params, the body params, and named params. So again, I won't be uh, discussing it. If you know what I'm talking about, that's good. Otherwise, let me know in the comments and I can be more explicit about this. So here uh, we need to fetch the, the Q parameter we will be passing. And this Q parameter will be used to do the querying. So if the Q uh, parameter is available, we will do filtering. So we will get the data and we will filter it so that it only selects the objects from this array that match the query. So first of all, let's do something like that. So let's assign the contacts, which is this variable over here, to another variable, which will be convenient because now if there is no queue, we will directly return the, the contacts, the whole list. And if there is a queue, we will assign uh, it to R again but this time we'll be do, we will do the filtering. So the first parameter is the each element of the, the array, and we can just do match and Q. So actually we cannot do that because each element in this array is, um, is an object, is a, it's a map but we want to search by a specific uh, field. So just to simplify it, we will be searching only by name. So I cannot just use the, the param, I need to extract the name from this object. So this syntax allows me to only get name of, the, of each of these elements. And this name will be used to do the, the query like that. Yeah, so that's good and it should work. Let's see. I need to restart. So now let's uh, let's do contacts. The, let's do the root. So it's, let's see if it works. Contacts, it works. So we can quickly see how many elements we have. So there is this nice tool called JQ, which is another tool I really like. I encourage you to uh, check it out. It's a JSON processor. So we can use that and we can just ask for the length. And it says 10, there's 10 elements in this uh, array. And now let's uh, do the query. So there's another thing I cannot, usually you, you just use the question mark, but because I'm using a Z shell, which is a particular shell, you're probably using bash. So I think you don't have to do that. But in Z shell, you have to prefix certain special characters with slash. So it's only in this shell. It's not in the browser or any other shells, as far as I know. And you just type the, uh, the query. So let's see. So it returns something. But are they? Yeah, it seems like they are only three elements. So let's just quickly uh, test it with JQ, yeah, three elements. So we only found those which are 
uh, match the LE. So if we do something longer, we have an empty array. And if we do something short, uh, shorter, we, we will probably have uh, more elements. Seven in this case. Yeah, so that's pretty good. And it works as expected. So before we go, that's pretty much everything we wanted to achieve in this episode. But before we go, we will do two more things. The first one, we will log the queries. So each time you are requesting the data, we will see a log message. And it's convenient because um, it will allow us to see how many requests we are sending and how many requests are being received. This will help us to make some optimizations in our code. For example, sometimes you don't have to send all the requests. You can just wait some time and uh, this way we will, we will see that. So now if I restart the application, and if I repeat some of those uh, queries with it, you can see that it's being locked at the bottom. So everything I'm pasting is being displayed on the backend side as well. So if I don't provide a query, it's undefined like that. And it only works for this particular route. So if I'm requesting root, it's, it's not uh, visible in the log because we define it in this um, in this scope over here. So that's the first thing. And the second thing will be, we will simulate that sometimes servers don't respond quickly because there is some other workload or some other things happen and your server just may respond slower. And we will try to simulate that. So whenever you, whenever there is a query LE, this is just arbitrarily selected by me, you can, you can select anything, but I'll be using that. So whenever someone types LE sends it to the server, we will wait longer than usual, like let's say two seconds to return this response. So we need to await and delay uh, two seconds. So this needs to be async, as in Dart. And we need to define delay because in JavaScript, it's, uh, it's not find as in Dart. So as you can see, Dart is already nicer in JavaScript. And we just need to uh, do, uh, so this is going to be, uh, let's see, a promise, resolve and timeout, uh, resolve ms, like that. Okay, so let's see if it works. So now if I type, I, I get the response like right away. But if I type L, let's say it's right away, LE, two seconds. And that's what we wanted to achieve. That's pretty much it. The only missing part is to deploy it to the internet and uh, to make it available. So I will do it in between the episodes. I encourage you to uh, do it on your own because it's pretty easy. I'm not covering that because there are so many options to deploy an application. It's not that important. But if you don't manage to do it, I will provide a URL to my own backend so you could continue with the next episodes. Okay, so that was pretty different than usual. But again, we need that to um, explain some concepts on the client side. So we need to have the full control of our backend to do some tiny things so you could understand uh, the relation between the backend and the client and uh, how to pull it all together. That's all for today. See you next time.